Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to another video. It's Sunday morning. I'm not doing a voiceover this morning. I'm here in the fields talking to you. If you hear some wind noise, then that's why. It's not a voiceover. I've got a few things to discuss regarding the ongoing search for 45 year old Lancashire mum, Nicola Bully. I wanna talk briefly about the caravan park owner who's come under a lot of heat on social media. I also want to talk about the two suspicious men that were seen in the village uh, just a day before Nicola disappeared. I think that's the headline that uh, British newspapers will be running with this morning. All the Sunday papers will be full of it. It's good that Nicola has had so much national and international attention. The question's always asked, why do certain missing persons cases just grip a nation while others go completely unreported? I don't know. I don't know. But that's what's happened in this case. And thirdly, I've been asked to do an experiment. I mean, I've not explicitly been asked to do an experiment, but I've been asked what they would do in certain circumstances. So hold on to your hats, that's coming up. Let's start with the caravan owner. So the caravan park is, uh, is very small. There's, I'd, I'd say, about maybe 10 static caravans there. For those of you not in the UK, what I mean by that is like campers that are stationary. So they're, they're, they're generally bigger than an average caravan or camper that you would pull behind a car. And it's very popular in the UK to go on holiday at a camp where you can rent out a static caravan for a weekend, a week or however long you want to. And these camps tend to open in the summer months. Uh, there's some huge camps, but this is very small. So if you wanted to take a break in the beautiful English countryside, then you could choose this caravan park. You can also choose to bring your own caravan if you've got one. Uh, a tent, all right? So they've got camping facilities, toilets, you know. All right, so I've looked on three sites. I've looked on Google reviews, TripAdvisor, and then a UK camping site that um, is popular amongst caravanners and campers in the UK. Overwhelmingly, the caravan park has had positive reviews, but there are a few that people have picked up on and posted on social media. Now, probably every business gets the occasional negative review. And I'm not sticking up for this caravan park. I'm just reporting what's been said and based on the information that I've gleaned from those three sites. Overwhelmingly, they get five stars or four stars. Overwhelmingly, it's five stars, but there are a few concerning ones. There's one that the owner was rude and abrasive regarding a payment. There was one where it was a difficult conversation on the phone and they were asked seven times if they had dogs, seven times. Now, dogs are allowed on this camp, but, you know, the, it's a little farm. They have sheep, they have chickens. So I would expect that the owner would be careful that people didn't have dogs that would eat her chickens or chase her sheep. So the third one is uh, the most alarming that the owner said that dogs must be kept on a tight leash and if they bothered her chickens, she would shoot them. Look, I'm telling you, I would not stay at a camp where the owner had threatened to shoot my dogs. I wouldn't mind keeping them on a leash around the chickens and the sheep. They wouldn't bother the sheep, but I can promise you Cassie would make a fine meal of those chickens. I saw the chickens, they're out there, right in the front yard. The sheep are on the field to the side of the house. There's only a handful of sheep, like pet sheep, I guess. 
So, yeah, I wouldn't stay there. And I would have given a negative review. Now, the reason why this is being brought up is that it's been alleged that it, it was the caravan park owner who found Willow at 9.33 and tied it to a bench. And then it was at 10.50 that the alarm was raised to Paul about uh, Willow being found, Nicholas' phone being found, Willow's leash and harness being found. So why the delay? And I've talked about that in previous videos. It is a concerning delay. It is. Why did that person who found Willow and then tasked a family member with finding out whose dog it was, why did that take so long? I don't know the answer to that. It is concerning. However, it is what it is. Now, we've got no confirmation other than what's been said on the internet that it was the caravan park owner who'd threatened to shoot a camper's dogs um, who found Willow. We don't know who found Willow, not been named, but people on the internet say that it was a caravan park owner. Now, maybe they've got that information from people who know Nicola, Nicola's friends, and know who it was. So let's just assume that it was the caravan park owner who found Willow at 9.33. Was she annoyed that Willow was off a lead and that's why she tied her up? Maybe. The sign on the tree. So this obviously was taken within the last two weeks because it's got uh, a picture of Nicola's missing poster up and this tree is just behind the bench. And there is a sign there saying dogs must be kept on a lead. Now, I don't know who owns that land uh, where the bench resides. I'm assuming, though, it's the caravan park because it says the seven acres of land around the park. So I'm assuming it's them. I'm assuming it's their land. But there's public rights of way through the land, just like there's public rights of way through this land. So they can't stop people walking through that land. They absolutely cannot stop people. Law, you know... <laughs> You can't block off public rights of way. But you can ask people to keep the dogs on a lead on your land. Uh, over yonder, so you can't see it from here, but where the woods are, there's a field that kind of comes south and the farmer has a sign up there at each um, entrance saying, I think it says something like dogs must be kept under close control or something like that because there's often sheep in that field. So I don't go there when I know the sheep in that field. Not that they would chase the sheep, but, you know, I don't want them bothering them. Uh, but if I would have to go through that field for whatever reason, then I'd put them on a lead. Uh, so an owner, a landowner can ask people to keep their dog on a lead even though there's public rights of way through it. Now, I didn't see that sign. There's no other signs that I could see about dogs being kept on a lead. There's no signs on the lower field. There's no signs on the upper field. There's no signs on the river path as you're coming into that area. Not that I saw. I'm not saying that there wasn't one. I'm just saying I didn't see one. And I kept Cassie on her line, which is this red thing here, uh, all along the river path near the weir and at the bench when I was there on Monday. Because there was people around, it was a new area, and I didn't want Cassie trying to jump in the river and get washed away. I, I knew she wouldn't. Once I saw those banks, I knew she wouldn't jump down there. However, I didn't want to take any chances given the current circumstances. But once we got, got down to the upper field where the riverbank was shallow, I let her off and she was fine. I wasn't told to put her back on. I wasn't chased. I wasn't shouted at. I wasn't murdered. So the implication is that an altercation occurred between the caravan park owner and Nicola. So this is the allegation that's being made by some. And I can't discount this. It's wrong to accuse people on the internet who most probably are innocent. But I can't discount it as a theory, I can't. 
that an altercation occurred at like 9.20, between 9.20 and 9.30, between Nicola and the caravan owner, who perhaps told Nicola to put the dog on a lead, put Willow on a lead. And the altercation resulted in Nicola either being pushed or falling in the river. And then the caravan park owner made, a, made up a story that she found Willow. I can't discount that, guys. I, I can't. However, I'm not going to accuse somebody on social media of murder. Or at the very least, causing Nicola to have an accident and then trying to cover it up. People, I guess, have been murdered for less. But it is what it is. That's what people are saying. It's not what I'm saying. Just because there's some negative reviews on TripAdvisor or Google or the caravan in sight, it doesn't mean to say that the caravan park owner is responsible for Nicola's disappearance. I think that's a stretch. It's a reach. But it's a theory, right? Uh, Secondly... There's been a lot of reporting in mainstream media and I think the YouTube channels who are covering this case, there are some. I think there's increasing interest on YouTube about this. If this had been an American case, everybody would have been covering it, but not so. But there are some channels that are covering it. Even the behaviour panel covered Paul Ansell's first interview. It was like only two minutes long. I think it was on Sky News. Even the behaviour panel covered it. Did a short video about uh, Paul Ansel, who was Nicola's uh, partner. He's come under a lot, a lot of heat, as family members always do. It's not fair, it's wrong, but there you have it. That's what the internet does best, or worst. It brings out the worst in people. But if you think that Paul is responsible for this, then... I don't know, I don't know what you're thinking, give your head a shake. But these two suspicious men, these men were seen on CCTV at the garage, at the, the gas station, right, petrol station. And I think it looks like they do car repairs. I saw that garage when I was there. It's very close to the Grapes car park. So the Grapes is the pub, which is just... I don't know, 100 yards or so, I don't know, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, to the entrance of the river path that uh, Nicola used and that I used when I retraced her steps on Monday. I've got several videos with that footage. Go and check them out. They were seen the day before, the 26th of January, and they were caught on CCTV just hanging around that area, hanging around the bridge area. Yeah, that is suspicious. What were they doing? No idea. Were they looking to case out properties to rob? Were they looking for somebody to abduct? They're a bit conspicuous, if they were, but stranger things have happened. But the police went to collect the CCTV from the garage. And I think the most interesting thing about this story is that uh, the CCTV at the garage covers one of the exits that Nicola could have come out of if she was abducted or she walked away. So people have said to me after my video yesterday, Michelle, what are you talking about? There's plenty of places to park. There's a car park right there. And they're referring to the car park at the Grapes. Now, the Grapes is a business. They've got CCTV. But importantly, so does the garage. It's now been said that the CCTV at the garage covers the entrance at Allotment Lane that Nicola could have come out of, and it also covers the Grapes car park. So if there was suspicious vehicles there, or Nicola had come out of a path that I think comes out behind the Grapes that the police have talked about, then it would have been seen. Unfortunately, I don't think it covers the river path entrance because that's, that's further down and I think just the way the lie of the land is, I don't think CCTV at the garage will capture that, uh, that exit there. So that's the one that uh, the police have said isn't covered by CCTV. So yeah, the media are running with that. 
uh, saying that the police have changed direction and they think Nicola's been abducted. They're covering all angles. They're covering all bases. As they've said, they're keeping an open mind. So are they collecting CCTV from the businesses in the village? It's a very small village. Yeah, of course they have. Of course they have. Are they following up on leads such as the red van? Yeah, that was seen on Hall Lane. I've talked about that in a previous live stream that I don't think the red van's relevant, but uh, the two suspicious men, do they want them to come forward? Yeah, of course they do. Do they have them on CCTV from the day before? Yeah. Could it be relevant? Yeah. Is it likely? No, for all the reasons I outlined yesterday. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it probable? No. But anything's possible. So we all keep an open mind. It's my theory, my belief, like the police, that Nicola fell in the river. But there's that slim chance that something else happened, that foul play was involved. Either she was pushed in the river, which is possible, or she was abducted. I find it difficult to see how she could have been without being caught on CCTV or seen in a very small village. I think it's a huge risk, but it's possible. I've been criticized for saying, well, you say it's possible, but then you say it's not probable, but it's not probable. Does it mean it didn't happen? No, but it, did it likely happen? No. I can only say what I see, right? Okay, so I've come to this very quiet part of the field for a reason, because I want to do an experiment. Actually, I want to do two experiments. So somebody asked me if uh, I asked Cassie to sit and stay and just leave my phone there and their leads, would they? Now, this is a pretty bad experiment, actually, because... Cassie and Tilly are not Willow. And Willow might be perfectly trained to stay, much more than these two numpties are. They'll sit and they know the command, they know sit, they know stay. They'll do it at home. All right, if I'm, you know, just practicing a little bit of obedience, they'll sit and stay at home. Will they on this field? No, they won't. I can tell you 100% that they will not. Cassie certainly won't. So this is going to be a very bad experiment, but I'm going to do it nonetheless. Would Cassie sit and stare and guard their leads and my phone if I told them to? So the assumption is, would Willow do that? I can't speak for Willow. I say no. If a Springer Spaniel is told to sit and stare, however well trained that dog is, and they see their favourite human being taken away or walking away and walking away out of sight, would they just sit there? Well, Willow didn't just sit there. She was agitated, right? When she was found, she was agitated in that area. Would she have sit and stared if Nicola had been taken away? In my opinion, absolutely not. Springer Spaniels are very intelligent. They're very good problem solvers. Uh, they'll override a command if they believe it's against their better judgment. So... I would say no, but, right, we're going to do this experiment. All right, I need to find a place to put my phone so I can record it. Here might be a good place. And I'm going to get them to sit and stare. So I'm going to put the leads on the ground. I'm going to put my phone on the ground recording. I'm going to tell them to sit and stare. And then we'll see how that works out. Tilly. 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 Sit. Tilly. Tilly. Sit. Tilly. I'm not dicking about. Sit. Sit. No chance for Cassie. Stay. 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 Tilly. Tilly. Stay. Stay. 
No. Can I? Pilly. Say. Pilly say. 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 Are you catching all this? It's not happening. It's just not happening. But like I said, Willow might have perfect obedience, whereas these don't. I think a more useful experiment would be what happens. She's concerned now. She's like freaking out now. What would happen if I went and hid? What would happen then? So if I went and hid, would they stay in one spot? Would they, what would they do? Would they come to find me? Or would they just do their own thing and sit in a random place? Maybe where the leads were. And obviously I can't drop my phone in this field because I'm using it to record. I didn't bring my other phone so I could drop this phone in the field and then walk away, leave this one on the floor and then the other one recording. I just forgot. So I'm going to have to take my phone, but I've got their leads, which have their scent all over them. So I'm going to drop their leads and then I'm going to go and hide. So we're going to play a game of hide and seek. Now, uh, like where Nicola disappeared, there's not a great deal of places to hide. So I can go down the bank there. The creek's like an inch high, so if I fall down the bank, I'm not going to hurt myself. Well, I might hurt myself, but I'm not going to die. Uh, but I've got to wait for him to be distracted. Now, Cassie, not a problem. Cassie's off. She does keep her eye on me at all times. But Tilly will stay close to me unless Cassie distracts her or unless she sees a dog and then she'll run off and won't come back for at least 2,000 years. So this might prove difficult because they stay with me. I guess, like Willow, would stay with Nicola. So if Nicola went away while Willow was distracted and then Willow didn't know where she was and couldn't track her scent, if she was abducted across the field, Willow would be able to track her scent if she'd been distracted and Nicola was gone. However, if she fell in the river, that's a completely different story. See, they might not have obedience. They might not sit and stare. But they are loyal. Which is a downside for this experiment. But I'm guessing Willow was loyal as well, because Springer Spaniels tend to be as a breed. Most dogs are. All right, so Tilly's distracted now. Oh, she's coming straight back. Huh. If Tilly would just go around this corner. Yes. Oh no, Cassie's coming back now. Oh no. Right. No. The ultimate experiment would be getting someone to abduct me and seeing what their reaction would be. But I don't think I could find anyone who would agree to do that, to drag me away, that they didn't know. They'd just follow. I know they would. They'd just follow. It's as simple as that. All right, there's a puddle over there. 
that might distract them both. And then I can just hide down this bank in here. I'm going to get spikes like you wouldn't believe. The bank near the weir in St. Michael's is the same kind of brush as this. Just as an observation. Right, 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 right. Right. Go, go, go. Oh, no way. As <laughs> soon as I went out of sight, she was there. I'd not even got, I'd not even got halfway down the bank. And she came back immediately. I went out of sight and then she knows, she knows where I'm at all times. Tilly's taking her time, but she's coming back as well. <sighs> right, we'll give it one more try up here. So no, you don't have loyalty to the lead. They have loyalty to the human and I'm stuck. The things I do for YouTube, honestly. Right. Okay, we'll give it one more try up here. But it might be a better distraction. See, Springer Spaniels are bred to flush birds. So they go on ahead. They're flushing the birds. This is hunting behaviour and then when they go to bushes where pheasants and stuff might hide in they jump into the bushes they spring into the bushes that's what gives them their names and then they spring out again the birds fly up and they get shot but the spaniel has to have eyes on their human at all times so even though it looks like they're hunting and they're distracted They've got an eye on their human at all times, right? Go, go, go. Nope. <laughs> ah. See what I mean? See what I mean? All right, we'll go down here. Nice one, Cass. Nice one. That's uh, nice and uh, muddy there. Nice one, Cass. You watch her, she looks back all the time, checking in. Look, she checks in. Even when she's hunting, she checks in. So why springers tend to be a little bit anxious. They, they don't like being on their own for long periods of time. It's their breeding. And, and yeah, you can say, well, one individual might not be representative of their breed in terms of personality. That's true. That is true. You know, you get the occasional springer who doesn't like water. You get the occasional springer who doesn't have a prayer drive. You get a lot who would not be able to, you know, undergo the training required to become a gun dog. But there's basic very basic underlying principles or characteristics of any breed the the majority of the individuals within that breed will broadly kind of fit she's watching me all the time tilly will probably run off up here because she has to go and check out that path to see if there's anyone there and if if i'm lucky there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Right. Right, here we go. Perfect experiment. Falling down the bank. Whoop. There we go. Thank you. And she's going to wait for Tilly. I think this is the best I'm going to get. She's going to try and help me. Now, I'm not 10 foot down, floating away in the river. I'm probably three foot down. Tilly's decided to come and uh, check it out now. But look at that, spring a spaniel immediately. She's like, 
what you're doing. Alright, so we'll stay down here. I think another experiment right, that I, I might do is I'm going to pretend I'm dead and see what they do. But I'm not going to do it today because they're on, they're on alert that I'm up to something. Look, look. Look. So Tilly's just stay, staying now and she'll just stick, stick the Cassie's having a run around. She knows I'm not in danger. She's found a ball, but she's going to stay in this area. She's not going to run off. Can you see her? She's not going to run off. She's just going to stay in this area. Look. So it, it took Tilly longer to respond, but once she'd responded, she's on the stair right there. Cassie has found a ball. She's gonna do her own thing. She came back immediately, but she uh, she's not gonna leave. Anyway, guys, right, I'm gonna get back up this bank now. Where did I leave the leads over there? See, leads irrelevant. Me, very relevant. All right, guys, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. I've been Michelle, hope you're well. See you in the next video. Goodbye from Miss Tillington and Miss Cassie Springer. You wanna take that home? She's got loads of these at home that she's found on the field. Come on, where's your ball? Good girl.